Hello and welcome back to another episode of Chat Beer Get Bang Lockdown Part 2 with one of your hosts, me, James Watt of Brewdog fame. And me, Roger Protz. Introducing a special guest this week, we've got Melissa Cole, the beer writer. Uh, and um, it's going to be a lockdown special. Lockdown special. It's going to be very special because <laughs> we've chosen some unusual beers. Oh, say hi, Melissa. Hiya. Uh, we've chosen some unusual beers. Uh, we've, we've, we've paired up some Tramp Juice beers, Carlsberg Special, for example, with some real expensive crafty beers. And we want to see uh, which ones are good value, which ones are best. Maybe we'll get surprised by the Tramp Juice. Well, I'll tell you what. I had to go to the shop today and pick up some of the... Uh, the in, in, in com, inverted commas, uh, the Tramp Juice. So... On, on offer to me was Carlsberg Danish Special Brew Lager <coughs> Erangeboom Imported Extra Strong and I presume this is from Poland <laughs> it's called Carpaki it's, uh, it's 9% so and you picked out some, some Kraft Wank didn't you some Kraft Wank what yeah. are they well, I've got this can that's been hanging around. It's a pastry, cherry berry pastry sour from Umbard and Brew York. That retails at 10 quid. 10 quid. 10 quid. Then you've got... Go on. What's that? Moncada. Moncada. Trendy London Impy Pudding Beer. I it's, thought they were uh, Manchester, but I think they are London, didn't they? Yeah, they're London. And that's um, a London. 10% cinnamon, vanilla, nutmeg, rice pudding, imperial stout. Sounds delightful. We actually reviewed uh, the Impy Custard on, on the podcast Correct. last time. Uh, and your final choice is... Uh, Marble. Is marble, yeah. Marble brew. It's, uh, what is it, Kieran? It's a barley wine. Barley fucking wine. Weighing in at 12.6. So all the beers are very strong. I have to correct you there. It's 12.4. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> right, what, what we're gonna, what's playing off against each other then? Well, f- let's set the agenda for a start. All right. We're going to have Carlsberg Special Brew versus Cherry Berry Pastry Sour. Well, th- let's just reiterate that these, n- these are not like... For like beers, there. It's the best we could do. You yeah. Know, I went round every off license in town today trying to pick up some tramp juice, and uh, it turns out in Leicester there's a condition on a lot of their licenses where they're not allowed to sell beers stronger than six percent because of those problems with street drinking. Bullshit. Yeah. So Bullshit. I went to four different places, uh, and the strongest thing they had was Zawecki. Do you mean Juviac? <laughs> That's why. <laughs> so. So these are these 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 beers are harder to come by than some of the craft wank we've got. <laughs> yeah, because only because we've got the craft wank in stock, mate. Okay, <laughs> well, which leads me on to uh, the other thing I was supposed to remember. This podcast is sponsored by the Blue Boar Leicester, um, who are doing a beer delivery and collection service for Cascale and bottled beers during lockdown. If you go to blueboarleicester.co.uk. Uh, you'll be able to see the beer range and order some beer. And I should stress that um, no views expressed in this podcast are uh, actually related in to, uh, to, the, to the pub company it in, doesn't in, reflect. Any, in any way. We're, we're, it's it's tongue-in-cheek. Yeah. Please bear that in mind if, you're, if you are a brewer. Say, we don't get supplies by Carlsberg anyway, do we? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we're going to do Carlsberg versus Pastry... The cherry berry pastry cherry berry style. Pastry style. We're yeah. going to do the marble versus the orangey boom and finish with carpaki versus empty pudding. In the meantime, um, halfway through, we're going to discuss the best places to go street drinking in Leicester. And we're also going to have some beer related uh, news chat. I mean, you know, there's only one story at the minute, right? Which is. Will we be open for Christmas? We will be open for Christmas. Who knows? A lot of lonely drinkers out there who are sitting at home listening to this with a, with a beer and want to be in the pub. I'll let you into a little secret, listeners. I've never had a Carlsberg special drink in my life. I don't know. I, this is new to me. I do not know what it tastes like. I've always avoided it because I just thought it's going to be foul. Even before I got into uh, Kraft Wank. Well, shall we have a look at it in the glass? You've just poured a bit. Yeah. That is... Crystal clear, crystal, or copper, copper coloured. 
Copper coloured? Copper. What copper have you seen? Well, burnished bronze then. Zinc. Zinc, you reckon? Yeah. It's somewhere on the periodic table. That looks quite nice. It does. It looks... Um, yeah, it looks drinkable. What are you getting on the nose? Danish lager. He's got a great reputation in, in um, where's it from, the Netherlands. We've had this discussion before, mate. Are you pulling my, pulling my blanket? Well, what is it then? Denmark. Denmark, which is the Netherlands. No, it's not. It's where uh, Peter Pan's from. <laughs> uh, look, look, look it's a quick geography lesson for Kieran. Denmark is a separate country to the Netherlands. The Netherlands in this country is also called Holland. But it's all Sweden, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the Danes have a bridge, don't they? They have a bridge over to Sweden. Well, whatever, whatever, man. This is an affordable beer. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> is, this, is this the same? I remember as a kid drinking special brew... I just remember it being called Special Brew. Is this the same? Is was Special Brew always been brewed by Carlsberg? Or yeah, is yeah. It is. yeah. There might have been some imitators along the way. We used to say it was Special Brew on the rocks because I was. I've, I've just had a sip. Now, many moons ago, I used to work in a pub that sold Carlsberg and Carlsberg Export, yeah. and I wasn't a big drinker. I was sort of a bit too malty. But this takes me back 10, 15 years. Yeah. To that time, uh, this is. Definitely malt forward. I was. I thought it was going to be treacly, syrupy, and sweet, and just nasty. But actually, does it make a difference that we poured it into a nice glass and we're sitting here in lovely surroundings, rather than on a park bench? Should we get from a can and see how you feel? <laughs> no, no, because uh, everybody's got to drink from that. But I must. Uh, we must add that we are socially distanced, <laughs> and we can't all drink from the can. You know. Anyway, moving on. What do you reckon? Um, I think it's nice. It's smooth. It's all right. It's not bad. It's, I've, I've never e- tried it before. I was expecting <laughs> something really, really bad, um, but then I was expecting... you telling me that you've never had a special brew? Uh, probably. Um, probably. I was expecting to have to argue the corner for this one and lie to you to say I thought it was <laughs> nice, just to be contrarian, just to... Because I know you're into craft beer and all that um, shit. And um, what about you, Melissa? It's alright, actually. It's not bad, is it? It's alright. It, it's yeah. As far as it goes, I'm I'm alright with this. It has got a, like a sickliness to it, though. Definitely. Not overly. Yeah, <laughs> I, it's got that. For me, it's got that. It, it's it's not properly chilled. I've heard people talk sure. about it. It needs to be freezing cold in order in order for it to be palatable. This is not freezing cold. This is like real ale temperature, and, and there is a bit of a claggy, cloyy. I wouldn't right. drink it oh. again, but like if it, someone passed me this, I did tell me what it was. Like, End of the I night. Drink it. End of the. Oh, this is a this is a craft lager of uh, from the beer Munzi Mile. Oh yeah, sound. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Like. Oh. Yeah, totally. I get you, man. Do you know that Tenant Super in Italy is considered the highest sophistication because it's an imported craft beer? And I'm not even bullshitting now. I'll let you into a little secret. You can get it in the cafes in Choro. <coughs> Many moons ago, I was on a rugby tour to Millham, just near Sellafield uh, in Cumbria. And uh, my mate, after the game, he went up to the bar and ordered a pint of Tango. And the barman came back with a pint of Tenant Super. And he went, OK, yeah, all right. And we didn't see him for the rest of the night. Bless him. <laughs> he was all right to drive home, though, right? <laughs> Not from Cumbria, mate. We were staying overnight. Why was he drinking tango then? Why was he drinking tango? Because we were underage. Oh, oh sorry, I didn't, I didn't mention that. Oh, we were right. like fourteen years old. Right. That was his uh, first introduction into beer, I think. Anyway, moving on. Oh, so we're we all in agreement that uh, that's actually not that bad. Well, just looking at the can, it's it's a five hundred ml, seven point five percent, three point eight UK units. Now seven and a half percent. What did that retail for? Um. Two. Quid. Two uh-huh. quid. I know for a fact you can get a four pack for seven fifty in Sainsbury's, which works out at four sixty eight per litre. The next beer we're putting it up against is a hell of a lot more expensive than that. This is a four forty mil can, and it's a collaboration. We love collaborations, don't we, mate? Yeah. Because what you're paying for in a collaboration is 
Logistics. Geeky twats travelling between breweries and playing ping pong for a bit before they go and... Well, it's true, isn't it? No, I'm really excited to try this because I've heard some really good things about it. So, Unbarred versus Brew York, Cherry Berry, Pastry you're gonna go, Sour. You're going to go on your boring label rant. All I will say is it's got a wow. sweet wraparound of a, past- a berry pastry thing. It's not very clear on the can. Uh, well, do, well, actually, what it is, it's, it's it can't, you kind of do know what it is. Kind of bad branding, man. It's like cherry crumble to me. Yeah, it looks like a cherry crumble. And do you know what? If you smell it and look at that can, that's exactly what it smells like. Yeah? yeah? Okay, well, 7.2%, it's already losing out to the special brew. <clears throat> yeah, you don't expect a sour beer to be particularly strong, though. It's not about the strength, is it? It is for you, you fucking alky. Thanks. <laughs> I don't right. drink beer less than 6%. Well, I'm not in this case, are I? Well, what you got on the nose then? Pro- proper. It does smell a bit like rhubarb and custard sweets. It does, it? doesn't it? Yeah, good shout. Oh, yeah. Great shout. You get that kind of pastry sweetness, I suppose it comes with the vanilla and the custard. Oh, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's an astringent face. It's in your cheeks. That's more sour than you expect. Ooh. That, that tastes nothing, nothing like it smells. I'm a bit disappointed. I want to put a spoonful of Horlicks in it. I want to put a spoonful of sugar, honey. It tastes like bum holes. No, it doesn't taste like bum holes. <laughs> it doesn't taste it's like bum holes. In fact, it doesn't. Um, it's mo- nice for me. For me, cookie. On a, summer, on a hot summer's day, if it's super cold... Yeah, again, I think we're missing out a little bit because it's not cold enough. You're saying I didn't do my prep and chill the beers properly? They've well, you... been the cellar cold, mate. They've been in the cellar. Yeah. 10 degrees. No, interesting. Leave in the comments if you can. What is the correct temperature to drink a sour beer? Please don't comment. We're not interested. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's, what, what's, your, what's your verdict on that? You don't like it. It tastes like bum holes. Melissa? Yeah. Yeah, I'm right, I'm right a bit, but it's just not, it's got to be on a summer's day when it's hot, man. Hmm. It's a summer drink, it's not a winter one. It's it really, smells it, like it, it's really it? dry. I, no, I don't think it does. I expect an, a, a proper kind of sharp cherry sweetness. It is a sourdough, so it's supposed to be sour. <coughs> it's it's, it's, it's <coughs> I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I thought it would be... Who's buying this beer and what they're buying it for? What's the occasion for drinking this then? You're saying summer's day, but are you, are you walking into an offie uh, next to the park and paying £10 a can for that? Probably not. You're going to have that as a special occasion beer at home, right? So food beer. It's a food though. beer, isn't it? It's, oh. it's, it's food beer, I would say. Oh, right. I would say a really big plate of greasy fish and chips. What? Would go really well with that. Nah, the nada? No, man. When I asked really, you, try it, mate. When I asked you the other it's day... Like a champagne. What you were having for dinner... And you said, I'm going to chip shop. I said, what are you getting? And you said to me, you remember what you said? Mixed Donner, <laughs> chicken selects, yeah. chips, and, and chocolate fudge cake. Yeah. What? Who gets chocolate fudge cake from the chicken? It's kids. You're not, for the you're kids. not exactly like a foodie who wants to do beer and food matching, are you? <laughs> you just want chips with everything. Is that, is, that, is, that, is that so bad? No, not at all, mate. No. Well, why are you pouring me out on it then? I just... <laughs> Because you're being a prick. Being a prick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm playing a character. Yeah. Who's a prick. And I'm playing a character who's feeling pretty beat up about that. Sam's yeah. a niche show, isn't there? I don't know many people even like Sam's. I think they become. I appreciate this. I think they're, they're becoming um, a lot. They're coming into people's consciousness a lot more. But yeah, you're right. I you mean, just did the, the thing where. That's the so, that's the, the side of, you, that's the side of dancing. When you <laughs> shiver, when you shiver, when you take a sip of something and you shiver like, whoa, 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 whoa. that's the sign of a, a, a not very drinkable drink. Yeah, true. It is like it's just, it, it tastes like cider, isn't it? It's drinking. like aspal cider. It's battery acid. I'm going to finish the special brew, but I'm not going to finish that. Fair enough. Fair enough. What's next then? Mm. We need some more glasses. Uh, okay. have, I need a pee as well. Shall we have a break? Yeah, just pause it, man. <coughs> We're just going to take a commercial break. Hello and welcome back. I'm still James Watt. The fat James Watt. <coughs> yeah, you forgot your flat cap today. Yeah, I did, yeah. 
Don't You're not really Melissa Cole, are you? Who, who are you really? This is Jo. She um, works at the Blue Boar. She's, a, one of she's them, our lady manageress. She's the lady manageress at the Blue Boar. <laughs> and I'm not really. Currently furloughed. I haven't got this Scottish accent to be James Watt, so uh, of course you probably recognise me as a uh, big dumb face from the Alston. I'm not really Roger Pross either, sorry guys. <laughs> are you what? I'm, Who is this imposter? I'm Pete Brown. So what have we got next? Moving on, what have we got next? We've got the Orangaboom, which is from the Netherlands. Where's that then? Holland. And we've also got the Impy Pudding, which is from London. London. Yeah. London. So I'm going to crack open the Impy Pudding first and uh, take one pass along. I'm already prejudiced against this beer because it's from London. And uh, they just think they're better than everyone else, don't they? Innocent to proven guilty. All right. Do they? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, they do. I, I like... I lived in the capital for 10 years and I thought I was better than everyone else when I lived there. Kieran, you live in Leicester now, mate, and you still think you're better than everyone. It must, it must have been a, a permanent change to your personality living in the capital. <laughs> Is that what happens? I don't, I've never lived in the capital and I, and I feel... You're so humble. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, what we've got... So this has got... This is Moncada, MP pudding. A cinnamon, vanilla, nutmeg, rice pudding. ABV is 10.4. It's an imperial stout. You've done well there because it's quite a confusing label. You've done well to extract that information. I've looked at the label a lot. Right. Memorised it. <clears throat> so what, ooh, what, what are we getting on the nose? Licorice. Marmite. Bovril. It's got a feet. It's not great, is it? Bovril. I hope it tastes better than it smells. Yeah, it doesn't smell good, does it? Well, just let's have a look at the glass first, because looking at, looking at what it looks like, that's part of the experience, isn't it? That's what you taught me. It's got good legs. It's got good legs. Really? Hey, that's really smoky. Smoky? It's really smoky. It's supposed to be sweet. It's supposed to be dessert. No, man, it's that's like... You know, that's like... Um, Beowulf dragon smoke. Yeah? On steroids. <laughs> it is a bit, actually. It's really smoky, man. Yeah. That's, a, that's an accident then, surely. I don't know. That's not, not what I describe it I mean, but it's, it been in, it's been in the bottle for a while. We've had that in stock for four months. Bottle condition, right? It's still all in date. It's still good. It's still been for two years on it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's going to last forever, isn't it? But yeah, if it's bottle condition, it doesn't really matter about the date. Oh. It tastes completely different to what it smells like. It, it tastes completely different to what the ex- explanation is. Cinnamon, I don't get... vanilla, nutmeg, rice pudding, imperial stuff. I might get a little bit of nutmeg. How did they get the rice pudding into it? Like, all them other ingredients you can chuck in the brew. You can't slop some rice pudding in. Sorry, that's just a bit of lactose, isn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't know, though. <clears throat> is it, look at the ingredients. Is it the lactose? I, it doesn't, it's not got that creaminess for, enough for the lactose. It's just rice pudding aroma. Is that smell? What's rice pudding aroma? <clears throat> nutmeg, innit? I think they've brewed it and then they've sniffed it and gone, oh, that's a bit like rice pudding. Let's yeah, put it yeah, the label. yeah, yeah. So it's like an afterthought, maybe. I'm not a big fan of that. I can't, I can't put my finger on the smell. It's not, it's the same thing. Fagash. It? It's like the Rauch beer, innit? You know, like uh, the German Rauch, you know, the smoked ham beer. Oh yeah. Schlenkerle. Oh yeah. Marzen. Schlenkerle, Marzen, Rauk beer. Mm. It, it, forgive me if I'm not pronouncing that right. No, I don't know. What do you think? I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced either. I quite like it. The more mm. I drink, the, be- the better it tastes. So what we got? We got. This is better that it's warmer. Three forty ml bottle. Yeah, it, it's giving off more flavour because of its temperature, definitely. It's retailing £5.50 for 330 mils. It's quite expensive, but it's not outlandish. Not for a 10 point, for it, for 10 point fear, 10.4. I don't know. What do you think? It's got 30 IBUs. Yeah, I get that. Is that high or low? Mm, it's not high. What does it stand for? International Bittering Units. Thank you. That's the educational segment done. <laughs> right, okay, so we're playing this, uh, this Impy Custard from Moncada off against the Aranja Boom, which uh, I seem to remember 
were my time at the pump and tap that they had a rangeboom, orange boom on tap. Yes. So this is the strong version. But this is a strong version, but I'm sure at some point they must have had the strong version on at the PT. <clears throat> I remember when I was a kid it came out in, in this country and it was uh, it was all the craze. What like, Ronnie and Reggie? It was I mean you could buy a four pack in your local off license, but it was like it was like a pound a can, man. It was so, well expensive. So again, um, I've never tried this, a Ranger Boom. It comes in a pitch black can with a red stripe. It's eight and a half percent, imported strong. I thought it was going to be a bit darker than this lovely golden colour. Uh, so we can't really compare the two. It's a good can. No wraparound labels. It's no, like, yeah, it's like a, a matte properly finish, professional, mass yeah, produced. Yeah, it's got a barcode. Yeah. You love a good barcode. Love a barcode. Love a barcode, man. Um, I suspect that this is going to be very similar to. The special brew. Same colour, almost. Yeah, pretty much. It's not a zinky. Oh, it's got a bit more of a skunk. You got any uh, special brew left? Yeah, there's some. Because we might, we might have to compare the two. Well, there should be some in the can. Where you put your double the can. Here you go, look. This is good. Yeah, this is definitely hoppier. But it's not a comparison. Oh, it, it's got to be a comparison between the two. Hoppier? It's hoppier, yeah. I didn't think you'd be using that word today. It's like gross. Yeah. Stop. Oh, that's nice. It's all right, isn't it? Yeah. Again, yeah. I'm very impressed with that. Trump juice is winning, mate, so far. <laughs> Trump juice wins. Oh, God. Yeah, I, 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 can't, well, listen, I can't disagree with you, mate. Listen, we've got the big hitter to go. We've got the marble barley wine. This fucking beast of a bottle that's been... I don't know what they've done with it. Bottle conditioned, barrel aged, who knows? Yeah, but uh, it's barley wine. I, I, I'm not... Personally, I don't like barley wine. It's too sweet. It's just another name for strong beer. Really? Yeah. It's not actually a wine, you know. What? Swat. Oh, dear me. Uh, what's it, okay, so who wins out of that then? Uh, they can't, they're not two comparable beers, really. One's an imperial pudding stout. It like isn't. Pudding. I like pudding. Do you? I'll have a crafty party over here. Oh, so, you, have you, so, so, Joe, you've gone so far, you're going for the. What are your two favourites? Go to the Brew York Cherry Sour. Yeah. And the Imperial Pudding. Oh, interesting. I'm, I'm all about the special brew and the. So I'm split so far. I'm split. Yeah. Um, I didn't really like this MP MP pudding. Uh, it's purely not because it's it's an unpleasant flavour, just because it. The MP custard was was a lot better. Way better, it? yeah. Way better than that. But it, this isn't what it says on the tin. The MP pudding is not what it says on the tin. The orange boom is exactly what it says on the tin. Uh huh. The pastry sour. Belies its smell, its aroma. It smells much sweeter than it tastes. Yeah, but you can't smell a sour. Oh, yeah, you can. Not really. It's vinegar. Not really. Not beer. What's lemon juice? Yeah, but it doesn't smell sour. It just smells like lemon. So, so you got that? Ah, burn. No. Oh. Well, just for, for for the benefit of the two, yeah. I have mixed the cherry berry pastry yeah. sour with the Best, special brew. I've got a can of brew York here, and they've got the spider web of taste. And it's got, not relevant, is it? Is it is relevant? Why? Well, because I want to, uh, uh, because I want to discuss, for example, the mouth feel. No one's mentioned the mouth feel yet. I did. How's it feel in your mouth? I did. I did. If you were listening, I did. Did you? Yeah. All right. Cloy, that's mouth feel. Yeah. Yeah. So. What doesn't it say? Listen, shut up. Where's the umami? Where's that? I don't know. I don't know. Look, are we losing? Look. Uh, I'm, uh, I don't know. I'm fucking pissed now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm this round. I'm going with a ranger boom. Yeah. Round previous. Yeah. Well. I'm going to go with the sour because I appreciate the level of effort that has gone into that to make it the beer that it is. And it 
I, to begin with, I was a little bit disappointed that it didn't taste like um, Lindemann's Creek. Right. But we all know that that's just mass produced. Tourist, nothing, tourist beer. Nothing wrong with mass tourist, produced. Tourist beer. beer. Or we've had some of that leather. You know, if, you, if you're producing a lot of something, you've got to get it spot on and consistent. Spotty dog, but yeah, it's not just not... It's for the masses. It's not for the refined not for the Not for the <laughs> Afrikanadios. <laughs> the the Canossiers. <laughs> not for Melissa Cole or... or Well, Roger Price only drinks Cascade and he only drinks uh, Fuller's London Pride anyway. But what I'm saying is, mate, there's nothing intrinsically wrong about mass production. No, uh, yeah, no, don't, let's not get on this one again, man. Every, oh. every podcast. Okay. All right. Let's talk about the best... Sex, pla- baby. No. Okay. Let's talk about the best places to street drink in Leicester. I heard New Walk's pretty good. It's got some good spots. No, you get turfed off, mate. You get to, Well, there's these drinking control orders, right, where the police can come and pull your can down the drain. Yeah. But you've just got to be snide about it. Paper bag? Paper bag. You've got... Um, Town Hall Square just down the road with the fountain that's nice of you okay my question is why, why would you want to drink in such a public place in the city centre well what if you've got nowhere else There's plenty of places mate you've got the world at your fucking feet oh well so we go like um, the park like Victoria Park I could think of better places go on then Martin Shaw Woods <laughs> what take, take a case of beer up there on your bike okay it's Brooks You've got it's not very convenient. Oh, we're talking about convenience, not not best places. Uh, convenience. Uh, well, very different things. We're mate. Talking about street drinking, not woodland drinking. Well, what's the difference? You're drinking open air, outdoors. Well, access to your local drug dealer for a start—that's got to be a priority. It doesn't apply to me. You're gonna get spiced up. You can't do it in the woods. <laughs> Why not? Just plan ahead. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> <coughs> All right, so you've got a, you're basically you 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 you're begging to get money for a can. Go and drink that can. Go back to begging. Get Nobody said anything about this. We said dr- street drinking. Nobody said about being homeless or being destitute or not having enough money Do you to think buy that's a beer. Something we should cover in this podcast? Not really. I think we're going a bit off well, topic. Well, you wanted to, when I said beer related, when I said beer related news, you wanted to talk about the political situation and lockdown and all that lot. I think that's more relevant. Okay, so will we be open by Christmas? Well, you got yourself out of that one quickly, didn't you? Uh, my opinion, no. No. Okay, why not? You think we're going to go back to the tier system? Yes, we have to. And Leicester's going to be in top tier, right? Well, it's currently the highest in the Midlands. Mm. I heard yeah. we're going to have uh, citywide testing, like they've done in Liverpool. Mand- yeah, mandatory citywide yeah, yeah, testing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that is that is definitely the case. I've got yeah. inside information on that. Yeah, have you been for a test? What what do they do to you? <laughs> Nothing. They give you they give you a package. Yeah. Um, you sit yourself in your car. Yeah. Uh, you follow the instructions. Quite simple so instructions. You have to do swab your bum hole or something. Not this time. No, that was a previous test. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, off topic. Uh, you follow the instructions, you swab your your tonsils, both tonsils, don't touch your teeth, don't touch your tongue. Yeah. It's not very pleasant, but I've got a good gag, gag reflex. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then you do your tonsils first, and then you've got to do your nostrils. But I misread, I misread the instructions actually, because I was a bit like, let's get this over and done with. I put it, it said, you only have to do one nostril. I'm like, oh, cool, cool. I stuck it up. And to be honest, it just kept going and going and going. I'm like, oh, I'm going to touch brain in a minute. I didn't, thankfully. Maybe I did. Who knows? Uh, and then I, I put it in the in the in the vial. File. File. Is that what? I think you're all right. I can see daylight through your ears, mate. Yeah. Anyway. So your negative test is valid still? Is it even though you fucked up the, doing the test? Oh, it, your negative result is still valid. Yeah, it, but it's only valid on that day. You might catch it the day after. No, no, I think uh, perhaps giving might mean that. Um, oh, you went too far. <laughs> no, sometimes you can get inconclusive tests. Um, mine didn't come back inconclusive. It came back negative. Cool. So I am safe. Cheers. Cheers. Well, listen. If the pub isn't over by Christmas, there's going to be a lot of disappointed, lonely people out there. There's going to be a lot of people breaking the rules. Yeah. People are still going to be going around and seeing people. What I really, really, really hope doesn't happen is that 
they keep us in lockdown, but then relax it for three or four days so that we get mad rush on Christmas Eve if we, if we dare to open, because that would be just stinky. These, these people just don't understand how, uh, how the trade works. And, and I think we were touching on this earlier about the future of the trade. It's so bloody uncertain. Until we get these vaccines rolled out, until they become um, safe for the public to, 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 mm. to, to be administered to the public, then uh, we've got to live in this particular way that we are. Oh, we've got to share the pain, right? Landlords have to give discounts on the rents. Breweries have to help out their tenants in a big way mm-hmm. and soak up the costs, you know? I've seen the Lansdowne's up for lease now. Looks like the orange tree sold it to Fuller's at just the right time. Bardos and Manos and Barcelonetta are up for... Up for You're kidding me. Yeah. Institutions, mate. Institutions. 30th, 1989. Oh. Used to work for the same brothers. They had a few around town. It was like they had pump and tap, didn't they? Mm-hmm. And they Barbara Sells. Run Runner. Brussels, didn't they? Yeah. Brussels. 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 I think they still own the building to Mozzie Coast. Yeah, it was Mosquito Coast. Yeah. yeah. Speaking uh, of someone who lives adjacent to the Muesli Belt, Wanky Clarendon Park, that is a... <laughs> That is a bit of a body blow, mate. Well, because no, they, they, okay, are, so they, they are. They, they are really. They they put. They are. They are responsible. In my eyes, um, having worked for them, uh, grown up in that environment, uh, and I feel like John Hussein took me under his wing, really, and, and basically taught me everything that I know. <laughs> uh, they have been instrumental in paving the way for Leicester nightlife. We have got a lot to thank them for. I think they've been absolutely essential to the development of Leicester nightlife. You look at their business models uh, over the years and it's been absolutely spot on. I can't blame them for wanting to move on. I think, personally, I think they've got the fingers in other pies. Uh, They're getting on a bit, no offense, John and Andy, if if you happen to listen to this. Um, and you, you're probably planning for your future uh, and uh, probably calm you down a little bit. And you don't want two massive premises, institutions that currently are doing fuck all for you. But if we ever come out of this, the other side with a vaccine and the ability to open up freely, those two premises are gold mines. It's just a shame that they haven't been able to hand it over to uh, the chef or the manager in, in, in a controlled way and retire and keep the business going because of all the shit that's going down. Well, I, I, think, I think you have to realise that John and Andy will not let that business go to anybody that they deem unfit to run it. Yeah. Because it's their legacy. Sure. And it's their hard work that's gone into that. And they're damn sure it's not going to let anybody go in there and go, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do half price this, we're going to, and just run it into the ground. No way, no way, no way. Because it will forever be remembered as Bardos and Manos and Barcelona. Cool. Well, let's rediscuss this when we do a Christmas special of this podcast. Okay. But for now, let's move on to the final beers. Yeah, shall we have a, 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 a quick commercial break? Yeah. Let's have a break. We'll be, bar- be right back. Be right back. <laughs> right then, final two beers. We've got Marbles Barley Wine, 12.4%, 660 mil, made in 2019. Boring label. It's stylish. It's boring. No, it looks like one of them, you know... Them it's like scrap- wallpaper. No, shut up. Shut up, listen. It looks like one of them scratch copper, you know, the black... Oh, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I do know what I'm trying to say, but I can't say it. The scratch etching things. It's a matte black picture. Etch a sketch. No, no, no. It's a matte black piece of card that you etch the black paint off and it underneath it is like this and, kind and of copper colour. You sniff it. Scratch and sniff. No. I know what you mean. You know like, what I mean? Yeah, it's like a posh paint by numbers. Yeah, but you, you, you etch the stuff off with... with You'd scratch it off with something that reveals like a silver inside. That's right, yeah, yeah. And don't you think? Don't you think? It looks a bit like that. No? Okay. And what's the other one? Um, w- car packy. Well, we've been calling this car packy. That's what it um, says. It's K A R P A C K I E. I presume it's from Poland. And with my limited understanding of the Polish language, I think it's probably pronounced Karpatsky. Karpatsky? Kar- yeah, Karpatsky. Well, it's a 9%. 440 mil, 500 mil can. How much was that? Oh, I did, I, a couple I of quid? 
160. 160. I think. Compared to this, which is £13. Slightly bigger, slightly stronger, but £13. Yeah, that's mental. So what, we're going to crack open first? The barley wine? The barley wine. Barley wine, all right. That's a rich colour. That's proper Auburn. <laughs> it's dark. It's clear. It's been sitting on the it's, shelf yeah, it, it's, for a bit. Yeah, it's been maturing for some time in our stock. Um, so can't smell nothing. Can't smell nothing. Does that mean you smell? You can smell something? Double negative. Smell everything. Uh, that reeks Feet. of barley wine yeah that's surprising well for, for somebody that just said I can't smell nothing oh fucking hell yeah what and you calling me out for saying it smells like a barley wine do you even know what it, it's got that mm. sweetness sweet smell so it smells like gold label yeah I've never drank a gold lemon, mate. Hey, you're no. missing out, mate. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> I am. I've seen the people that drink it. Well, they're all dead now. <laughs> it, it's. I, can I say toffee? You got? You getting toffee? No. Yeah, maybe. It's yeah. Just wine, isn't it? it. Yeah, it's it's, it's a. Sweet oh yeah, bastard! I've just tasted that. That's just. Punch me, man. That's the strongest flavour yet out of all of these. Right. Kind of excited for this because I, I really don't like barley wine, but. Ooh, yeah. Oh, it's so sweet. It's a bit more like black treacle than toffee. Oh yeah, black yeah black treacle is a very accurate description of this beer. You're never going to solo a 60 mil bottle. No. Yeah. That's, uh, no I don't I've got a third. I've got a third in the glass. I think this is aimed at people who do podcasts. The guys at Triple Hopped would love this. This is one of their beers you share around the table because you brought it because you want to impress your mates with it. Do you know what? The other day, my wife, my lovely wife, <clears throat> she's not amazing in the kitchen, but she's really, really good at making soup. That's the one thing that she trumps me on. And this is not being, me being arrogant in any way, shape or form. I don't know where I'm going with this. Well... It's just a big up to Hillary for making good soup. What the fuck has that got to do I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I had a point, but I can't remember what it was. Was it about tramp juice and soup kitchens? No. No? no. That's not the direction you wanted to go in. No. I know she had... What did you have today? You had... Uh, Tomato and basil. Tomato and basil. Creamy tomato and basil. Double cream. Double cream. You see, yeah. If I buy some double cream, I never get around to using it all. Because you can use it in tomato soup and what else you put it in? Loads of stuff. This is like, it's like Christmas cake. Pastas, curry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Soups, Whip your, it. Any pudding. Whip it on your digestive biscuits. Irish coffee. Yeah. 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 Um, this has got, yeah, the more I taste it, it's like raisins. Christmas cake. It just tastes like Christmas to me. It doesn't linger very long, though, the taste. It's a real punch on your tongue when you first sip it. Pun punch. It. Punch. What's, yeah. that, what's that word craft beer wankers use? Vinuous. Is it kind of vinuous? I don't know what that means. I heard it on a podcast. Not here. No. Must have been triple hopped. Vi vinuous. Vinuous. Can anybody tell us what vinuous means? Don't, Leave it in the comments. Don't, don't, do, don't do the comments. I'm not going to read them. I am. All right. Vinuous. No, I, I can't drink 660 mils of this bottle. No. I think, I'm, struggling with a, I'm struggling with a third of a pint. Oh, I, I, I don't it. see the point. This is a sharing bit. I don't see the point of it in 660 mils unless you're in this situation where you might be able to share it with to three, make it more three special. or four people. It's to make it more special. If you put that in a free third <sighs> mil, suddenly it's not a special beer anymore, I, is it? I would go the other way and put it in like a little miniature. Oh, I love it. You like, you like that size oh, bottle? Really, yeah, because it... Oh, I'd have a nice cheese board. Oh, okay. So, so it's an occasion. Server, yeah, it's a drink yeah. for an occasion, not just to get hammered. Drink it like a wine rather than a beer. Yeah, but isn't beer for quaffing? I don't 
depends what mood you're in, I suppose. Yeah, I've often thought this. There is a debate. Do you prefer quaffing or guzzling? What's the difference? I don't know. Quaff, quaffing's more sophisticated. Guzzling's for, for the uncouth. That's right. Okay. I think like you... It's you... got a big flavour. It's got a big smell. I, I lifting the, the, the glass up to my mouth. Nice. It's got a big, big smell to it. It's the I'm... most ar- aromarific <laughs> of I'm... all the beers that we've had. I wanted to dislike this beer because it's from Marble and they I don't like what they do because they're just a bit kind of like crafty and expensive and trendy. It is expensive. Yeah, but I really like this. I really like this. Do you? Yeah, I do. I do. I couldn't drink any more than a little bit of it, but it's nice. It, it's like a really sugary cup of tea. Really sugary cup of tea. But boozy. Or maybe like an Irish coffee, perhaps. Mm, yeah. I don't know. I, I, there's an affinity that's building. The more I drink it, the better it I get gets. The same, I get the same nice warm feeling when I have a rum in my coffee. That kind yeah. of feeling, you know. And that's where, you know... I, th- I think a rum chaser with that will go down really well. You don't need a rum chaser with this. You don't need a rum chaser. No, but no. I'm saying... Yeah, but I'm saying that the flavours will complement each other, wouldn't they? Uh, uh, Again, I'm going to mention my wife here. She she excelled herself one year at Christmas, and she bought me a bottle of El Dorado fifteen year old rum, uh, from French Guyana, I think it was, uh, and it was next level, next level, really fucking tasty Demerara rum. Yeah, yeah. And if if I had a shot a a, a glass of that next to this, I'd be a happy happy man. This, you cannot drink a pint of this. This is not a pint. Unless you're mental, you can't drink a pint of this. A third, I could sit for 40 minutes and pleasantly enjoy it. Be, not being a, a, a barley wine fan, I think this is really good. Sound. Well, let's do the final bit, which is the car packet, and see how Carpaccio, what do you say it? <laughs> car, car pizza. <laughs> Kapatsky. Kapatsky. Hey, Kapatsky. No, no, it's Polish, man. I presume it's Polish. Get it from the schlep. <laughs> Isn't that taste? Oh, that's smack. Polski Sh- schmack is a shot, right? No, smack is a taste. Schlep is a shot. Schlep. I thought that might be bread. Oh. Schlep. Don't know, man. Don't know. Let's see if this stacks Again, up. Again, it's... it's Let's it's see a if dark can, but with a burnt gold. What do you know? Burnt gold. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a lot of laugh in it. Oh. Nice colour. Au contraire. Mon ami. So, this would be, if you were into this kind of beer, this would be much better value. If you want to just... Yeah, so I, I'm, I think it was £1.60. So... Earlier, I spent £5.10 on a can of Special Brew, uh, a can of Karpatsky, and a can of Aranjaboom. The total for the craft beers was f- oh. is £28.50. Shut up. No, man. Hey, isn't it? So, £5.10 that's versus... What, that's what a craft beer habit's going to cost you. This smells a bit like washing up liquid. It's like it smells a lot on it. Oh, it smells a bit chemically. Chem- chemical. Yeah, maybe. It's horrible. That's the worst of the tramp juice so far. It's, m- it's bland. Yeah, it is a bit bland. Maybe, but it's, but just it's, maybe it's, it's just because we've just had the... It's viscous. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah, okay, so it's thick. It's got a, a tree. No, it, no, it ain't. That's thin. Yeah. Does that's not viscous? Thank you, Joe. That is thin. There's nothing to it. Compa- it's the opposite oh, of viscous. Go and have a glass of water each. Mm. Eat a dry cracker. No. Just go and have a glass of water. Wash your mouth out. This isn't. This isn't a craft beer panel at, at, at a wanky fucking craft beer festival it. in London, mate. We're not. We're not doing that business. We're just boozing. Okay. We have done it in the wrong order, though. Oh, 
yeah. doing right benefit of hindsight I'm, I've got to tell you guys I'm a bit drunk now <laughs> yeah I've got a bit of a wobble on I don't mind that I, for, me, for me I think all of the tramp juice lagers that we've tried are yeah. very similar no the Uranji Boom clinches it Ranji boom, Boom's the best, yeah. I wouldn't say it's hop. It's hoppier, it's not hoppy. I said it's hoppier. They're all just really chemical and synthetic, all of them. Just the the tram dudes? Yeah. Oh, no, the, 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 the Carpaccio is just near. That's nah, minging. Right. Win, the winner of the best beer... Carpaccio. The best beer out of... <laughs> the best beer out of the six, for me, is the Uranji Boom. Wow. It scores. It scores highly on everything for me. On drinkability, value, and um, just just the look of it. Well, I'm gonna have a, a Jameson's and Coke. The only, nah. only, way, only way is up. <laughs> yeah, the only way is up. For me, I think um, the best beer of the evening, the afternoon, has been the uh, marble barley wine. Yeah, it was barley wine. I was. I, it was a beer that I was least expecting to like because I just don't like the sweetness of barley wines. But actually, I've really appreciated the few sips that I've had. But again, could I, could I drink a pint? Mm, reluctantly, yeah. But not, not, I couldn't sup it. Couldn't quaff it. It's not a quaffing beer, mate. No. But I like it. Well, we've got five bottles left. I'm going to list it up on the website. If I can remind everybody to go to blueballleicester.co.uk to order some beer during this lockdown. And um, are we going to leave it there? Any message for the listeners? Should we do the uh, outro? Outro? Yeah. La 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 la